just erupted in England this weekend. Far right and anti immigration protesters took to the streets across the UK. Some of the riots even spread to Ireland. The disorder was fueled by an online disinformation campaign circulated by right wing commentators falsely claiming that the suspect in the knife attack that killed three young girls at a Taylor Swift themed dance class in Southport last week was a Muslim illegal immigrant. According to police, the 18 year old suspect was born in Wales. Protesters set their sights on a hotel that had housed asylum seekers in northern England, breaking windows and setting trash bins on fire as they clashed with police yesterday. They then set fire to in a uh, police vehicle in a nearby town called Middlesbrough. Rioters hurled bottles and rocks at protesters. On Saturday, a Liverpool library and food bank were both set on fire and groups damaged local stores and businesses. Many of the weekend's events were under the banners, enough is enough, and quote, protect your kids. A video circulated on X that shows a Muslim group mobilizing in response to protesters in Manchester. Some on X are writing enough is enough, make England English again, save our kids and stop the boats. English is for the English. As previously noted, the police have detained that suspect in the dance class murders. The suspect is a teenager whose name is Axel Rudakabana. He was born in Wales. His parents are from Rwanda. So a lot of violence going on in the UK has people very, uh, very upset, very worried. Uh, it's a very bad thing. And I, you know, I would just say to anyone who is upset about whatever, whatever policy you don't like, you know, to be out there setting things on fire is never a good idea and um, is just a, just a bad thing to see. Yeah, it was a thousand people. They were holding a vigil after what happened in this attack. A lot of the victims were children. And there was a violent response to what was a, a vigil. And that was shocking. A group began to gather near a mosque. It seems that a lot of these attacks are targeting, you know, people of color, people who are perceived to be Muslim. And, you know, this group attacked the mosque, throwing bricks, throwing bottles. Uh, and officers were wearing protective gear and riot shields. They were trying to defend themselves. And a lot of officers ended up getting injured. And uh, Ibrahim Hussein, who is the Southport Mosque chairman, told BBC that the group started to burn the fences and throw things, burning stuff at the windows. They smashed all the windows. They broke all the fences. And obviously the chanting and screaming and anger was overwhelming for all of us. And the Northwest Ambulance Service said 27 officers who were responding to the violent mob were taken to the hospital. 12 were treated at the scene. It's just insane what's going on. I talked to my friend who is Palestinian and she lives in the United States in Charlotte but she was talking to friends that she has over in the UK and they're just saying that everyone's uh, afraid. They seem to be targeting anyone they see who is, is black, Asian looking Muslim. And there's a lot of fear uh, that people have that the police are not responding in a way that, that keeps them safe and that they need to mobile anti-fascist groups in response to these mobs that many people are describing as lynch mobs. That's a very scary uh, time there in England. Yes, so the suspect is not uh, Muslim, is not himself um, an immigrant, although his parents are immigrants from Rwanda. Rwanda is in eastern Africa. It is not a Muslim country. It has a very small Muslim population. It's a majority um, Christian, so he's not, you know, he's African, he's black, um, second generation immigrant. Now, it's not again his motivation for i don't know if he's just deranged it's not it doesn't is it's not connected to any kind of or it's not been stated that it's connected to any kind of ideology muslim or anything else um so they really did um jump the gun and make some assumptions here that don't at all um fit the facts you know i will say obviously that frustration with the authorities to um not to have failing to grapple with um with crime uh is a problem you know in all of the de developed world right now um a lot of frustration with um, crime having gotten out of control in some places, so I understand um, the frustration, but it was very much misdirected in this case against, um, 
people who have nothing to do with it, and even you know, even if he had been um, Muslim refugee or something, the burning someone else's mosque is not the right response to that whatsoever. Uh, so it's really um, you know self-defeating tactics, and you know conservatives who rightly I think called out the rioting and looting and burning of businesses and buildings in response to um, you know police brutality stuff like with the George Floyd protests and other protests, conservatives rightly said that's you know disgusting way to respond to injustice. You shouldn't. You shouldn't engage in additional further destruction. Is not helping your cause. You know that's the same. We, we should say the same thing about when it's if it's right wing people rioting, if it's left wing people rioting, setting things on fire, threatening people, scaring people, engaging in violence against people is just never a is never a good um, morally or politically or strategically um, way to deal with problems in the society. Right. And, you know, this this suspect is someone who is a teenager. His parents being immigrants from Rwanda, there was a genocide in Rwanda in the 90s. There's a a lot of instability across Africa due to voids in power as a result of colonial rule. Rwanda specifically was colonized by Germany and was under Belgium rule. And a lot of the political instability does lead to violence and having people fleeing uh, extreme violence, a genocide in Rwanda and, and settling in England and, and people across the country saying that that you don't belong here, this and that. I can understand a lot of the anti-immigration sentiment comes from people being told that the reason they can't afford housing, the reason their housing costs burdens, uh, the reason they can't find a good paying job is because there are immigrants coming in and they're taking the resources. Now, these are people who are desperate, who are fleeing extreme violence. And to to see them as the reason your government is not delivering public services for you, or the economy in England doesn't work for you, is just absolutely misdirected anger. And it's just really sad to see things devolve in this way and across racial and ethnic lines there in the UK. In some sense, it does feel like you know, imperialism coming home in Europe, all of this anti-immigration sentiment. But there have been a hundred arrests in London of of people, you know, rioting, protesting, two in Greater Manchester and eight in Hartlepool. And so I think they should thoroughly investigate the networks of these people. Who do they know? Who do they work with? Because breaking down the organizing structure is necessary to prevent this from becoming a, a, a long term issue across England. Right. I mean, many on the right will say, you know, the the dysfunction in the Middle East, in Africa, does not create some obligation on Western nations to absorb vast, vast numbers of of immigrants, of culturally and socially distinct uh, peoples to the Western world, and that that is having an ill effect. Now, I think. Some of the arguments against that are stronger than others. Um, I, you know, I don't, for instance, the, the idea, it, it, you know, if, if the immigrants, as they are in the U.S., are coming and if they're working and they're, you know, they're actually going to be net contributors to the economy, I, I think it's fine and it's good to encourage that to have. Obviously, it should be done legally um, if it's being, you know, but if it's just they're coming and they're being given public housing or resources, they're not being required to work, and they're not, um, you know, they're not um, uh, adapting to the culture, and then it can have a bad effect on the, on the trajectory of the country as it's clearly coming to a head at some point in some of these countries in Europe, although it should be, you know, the, the actual statistics of violence need to be very carefully looked at, you know, who is, like in this case, the person responsible is not a Muslim, uh, or the, the alleged suspect is not, a, is not a Muslim, is not himself a refugee. Um, you know, who is, who is, in the U.S. at least, it's like the majority of violent crimes, be the vast majority is not, it's not immigrants coming in, it's poor people in our cities who were born here, who are disproportionately uh, black, who are not I mean, that's the teenagers. That's the reality of crime. And it's, it's uh, you know, let's not, you know, you, you shouldn't scapegoat people just because you don't like them or whatever. Right. If he was Muslim, this still wouldn't be OK, first of all. Uh, but also the attack on the mosque is obviously because they perceived the suspect to be Muslim. 
So they wanted to respond by attacking the Muslim community. But it's very clear that these people are angry that anyone from another country who is a person of color, who is not ethnically you know, white in the way that people in England perceive whiteness, that, that's what they have an issue with. That's why they're saying make England English again. And so that is understood in the context that during the Ukraine war in May of 2022, there were weekly arrivals of Ukrainian refugees fleeing violence in their country of, of 10,000. And there weren't violent mobs saying, don't send the Ukrainians here, keep England English. And that to me signals that this is fundamentally about race for a lot mm. of these people. This is about white supremacy. And I think that everyone in England needs to be responsive in a, a communal way. The only way you fight fascism it's not necessarily by emboldened, militarized riot police. It needs to be everyone in that community standing up against it, protecting people of color when they see suspicious groups of white men surrounding them, which we've seen videos over the weekend of this happening You know, across the UK. I saw one instance of a black man being surrounded in a park and the police had to respond and it got very ugly very quickly. But if community members stand up to these guys and say, hey, leave, leave him alone, and everyone is a part of an anti-fascist movement, that's how you combat stuff like this. And I hope that for mm. the people of the UK, from what I've heard, there is an effort to mobilize you know, anti-fascist, peaceful action to protect members of the community that are the target of these essentially lynch mobs mm. across the UK. I would uh, question, scrutinize whether anti-fascist forces are themselves uh, forces for peace, as we've not necessarily seen on our streets in the US, but we'll have more rising right after this.